What's up everyone, Guy here with Another Presents. This time I'm talking about something that's been in the news for a little while now, and... Well, it's not good. As of the recording of this video, it's about 99.9% .9 certain that Toys R Us is closing down. The only thing that hasn't happened yet is that Toys R Us has not come out and made an official statement that yes, they are closing, but right now all signs are pointing to it. What does one say when there's been something in your life the entire time, and now suddenly it's not going to be? I truly was a Toys R Us kid as I was growing up, and even today I can still go in and find some video game or hard to find action figure or whatever. It's a little something to add for the show, and, and it's not hard to do. My current Toys R Us is just down the street from me, so it's not a big deal. I've decided to look at the closing of Toys R Us in two different ways, as the adult in me and as the kid in me. As an adult and being honest, Toys R Us has been doomed to fail for quite some time now, and there's been a number of factors. It's not just higher prices or Amazon or kids playing with iPads, and there is some truth to that, but I'll get to that just a little later. Some of the biggest factors that affected Toys R Us and put it in its current situation happened in 2005. Companies such as Bain Capital, Vernado Realty, and KKR and Company bought out Toys R Us for $7.5 million, made the company private, sunk about $1.3 billion into the company during buyout and then when all was said and done, they pocketed about $470 million in fees from the whole deal. And even last September, when the company announced bankruptcy, there was follow-up stories about how all the major executives pocketed nice multi-million Christmas bonuses, because what a great job they did. Fantastic job, guys. You ran a 70-year-old company straight into the ground. Good job. You really earned those. But there were other problems that were going on with Toys R Us, and even reading on the internet and comment sections, which... <laughs> You really shouldn't do. But it was interesting. There's two very different types of divide. There are people who are older and more my age, which have all the warm, fond, nostalgic memories of Toys R Us. And then there is a younger generation, which really don't seem to have that sentimental pull with Toys R Us like we did. They didn't grow up with that familiar Toys R Us jingle, I'm a Toys R Us kid. And most of the complaints are that they can get it easier and cheaper at companies like Walmart, Target. They can order it online at places like Amazon. They just don't see a point in going to a brick and mortar store anymore. As a side note, I actually worked for a while at a Toys R Us during one Christmas season. It was coming readily apparent to me that kids today really focus on tablets and phones and it's so much easier just to go download an app and call it a day instead of picking up a Barbie or Hot Wheels or Star Wars figure. Kids today just just simply aren't into toys anymore like we were back in our generation. It's a troubling issue for imagination and creativity. And reading other news stories about Toys R Us, once Toys R Us calls it quits, about 10 to 15 of the toys that are out there on shelves today are going to be gone forever because Toys R Us actually took chances on smaller companies, unlike stores like Walmart and Target that have limited shelf space. And there are other issues, aesthetic issues, such as the way they displayed their store. If you remember Toys R Us stores back in the old days, they were really bright and colorful and set up like a warehouse. Every aisle had new toys and games and everything else, and now they look like boutiques. They just don't have any sense of fun to them anymore. They all use drab colors, everything's way too sectionalized, there's not really any play areas for kids, and I think they followed that trend when Apple was so sleek and minimalistic, and so many other companies followed it as well, and it just didn't look good for a bright and colorful toy store. And then there was the matter of Jeffrey the Giraffe, their mascot. From his inception up to the 1990s, Jeffrey was a great character. He was fun and lively and colorful and had a whole family. And then somewhere in the 2000s, they just went off the rails with them. They briefly introduced him as a real-life giraffe and then went over to this super minimalistic, derpy design that's so simplistic. I guess someone at the company did a focus group and decided that children can't process details in their characters. I don't know, but he just looked really bad. There were a number of problems, and it wasn't any one singular issue that caused the demise of Toys R Us, although I would place a majority of those problems on Bain Capital and its cohorts for running Toys R Us into the ground. Now, speaking as someone who still enjoys Toys R Us, there were a lot of nostalgic memories and sentimentalism that went with the store. I think a lot of people remember their first Toys R Us store. Mine was located at 2063 North Town East Boulevard in Mesquite, Texas, just across the way from Town East Mall. Whenever my family did their big Dallas trip, a visit to Toys R Us was almost always inevitable. I still have a lot of fondness for that store. There was something really magical about the Toys R Us experience back then. It was just as I described. It was a giant warehouse full of toys. Every major toy that had some level of influence in my life, I must have purchased at least one item from each series there. My favorite, of course, was always the video game section. 
Back then, it wasn't known as our zone. It was this big aisle, same as any other aisle, with these rows of cards that you could flip over to look at the front and back of each and every video game, get some information, see some screenshots, and if they had a ticket, then they had it in stock. And you'd pull that ticket, take it up to the cashier, have them run it, take it to their back video game area where someone would meet you, hand you the game, and that was the big reward at the end of your shopping experience. I played so many Atari and Nintendo and Sega and PlayStation games. When I did a visit back to Texas last year, I actually made a point to stop by that old Toys R Us. It's not the same as it used to be. They adapted more of that boutique style as I mentioned before, but still, I picked up Ultra Street Fighter 2 for Switch there. Just had to make it a point to get something. I think I just wanted the feel of getting Getting something from my store again. But now that I look back and realize that there actually is an end to all this, I really thought back what was my most favorite Toys R Us memory. There were a lot of happy memories of Star Wars action figures and He-Man slime pits and Transformers and Nintendo games and everything else. But honestly, my favorite memory was just the time that I spent with my dad. Mom would go off to look and shop at clothes, so we'd just go down the street to Toys R Us and he'd indulge me and let me walk up and down the aisles. They had train sets, which was his personal favorite. I could almost always walk out with some little something. It was a souvenir of our time together. My dad passed a few years back and I realized that this is just another memory that I have to let go. I think that's why I find it so funny that people are so quick to dismiss it as just simply a store. And at the end of the day, yes, stores come and go all the time and there have been Toys R Us closings in the past, but nothing like this. It wasn't going to go away, it just moved to a new area. I didn't go because the prices were better than anyone else's, I went for the memories. There was always that little hint of nostalgia that came with a Toys R Us whenever you walked in the doors. Whether it was looking for a new Robo Force robot, or as I got older, I attended each midnight opening for whenever a new Star Wars movie came out. I did it for the three prequels, and I did it for episodes 7 and 8. <laughs> kind of funny, I thought I'd be able to do an episode 9 next year, but... It doesn't look like that one's happening. That'll be an incomplete set as well. But I think I will miss the fact that Toys R Us always put a smile on my face and made me think of simpler times. I don't think I'm going to be able to get that from an Amazon order whether I select two-day shipping or not. From bikes to trains to video games, it really was the biggest toy store there was. And to those Toys R Us employees who put their heart into it and went out of their way to make sure a kid smiled, from one old Toys R Us kid, I thank you. A million toys at Toys R Us that I can play with. I don't want to grow up. Cause if I Hallelujah. Hallelujah.